Shabbat Shalom. In this week's lesson, we're going to be talking about a young lady. In English, her name is normally Rebecca, but in Hebrew, sometimes you'll hear as Ribka or Rivka, but it's all the same lady. I hope you enjoy. Hey, what's up to it, kids? Shabbat Shalom. Guess where we're at today? We're at the Chattanooga Zoo in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And me and my family are on a search for a very interesting animal. There's all kinds of animals on the inside of here. But we've got one in particular that we came all the way up here to find. Now we're gonna go walk around on the inside and show you what we find as we search for this specific animal. So y'all come with us and we'll go inside. The Chattanooga Zoo is home to 160 different species of animals. And today we've got Seth, Ariel, and Eliab on the lookout for something super hairy. Did they find it yet? What is that? I can't see. Oh, let's see if I can get a little bit closer. Look, it's right there. It's a chimpanzee. Nope, that's not what we're looking for. Monkeys are cool. But that's not it either. We saw rodents of unusual size. We saw teeny tiny little frogs. We saw lizards that were big. Some that were bigger. And some that were huge. Check out the Komodo dragon. We saw snakes in the trees that would give you a squeeze. Then we saw ones that just blend in. Check this guy out. Whew, that's a bad boy. I'd run away from that and hurt myself. What do you see over there? Oh, wow. Isn't it beautiful? Look how majestic. We got to see a lot of big cats that day. You know what else we saw? We saw meerkats. Look at those guys, standing at attention. We also saw some animals that would smile at us. Now, the animal we're looking for is supposed to be happy, but it's also hairy. And like this animal right here, he's supposed to chew the cud. But this one has a split hoof. Did you know that giraffes chew the cud and have a split hoof? That means they're clean animals. So, the animal we're looking for is actually named in the clean and unclean list, and it's told that it is unclean because it does not have a split hoof. But, we're not gonna eat it. Something cool though is Seth and Ariel got to feed the giraffe. Let's check that out. <laughs> hey, why do you think his tongue's so long? So it sucks it up. Maybe so he can get leaves off of trees? Dude, wasn't that cool? That tongue was super long. All right, the animal that we're looking for must chew the cud. It's gonna be hairy, but it can't have a split hoof. Matter of fact, they're known for having toes instead of a split hoof. They're also known for having a hump. Any idea what it is? That's right, a camel. Great job, guys. All right, we're going to get into our Sabbath school now. We're going to start out with prayer. We're going to have song. Then we're going to hear our story and find out why camels are important to our story today. And then we'll have our moral. Y'all enjoy it, and I'll see you here in just a few. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malhuto Leolam Vayed Amen, Amen Hello, it's Miss Melissa. Today I'm helping Mr. Wayne. So let's start out with some prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your Sabbath. We thank you for your word and the opportunity to learn about all these amazing people that lived before us and that walked after your ways. Father, I pray that you'd help us to be more like them in their good character traits. And I just pray that you'd help us today to have hearts that hear what your word says and that we can apply these things to our lives. Bless all of the families that are with us 
us today and all of the contributors. And we just, we thank you for your goodness and for this opportunity that we have to share together and to learn. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Welcome children. I'm so excited for you. Today you get to learn one of my favorite Bible stories about Rivka. She's an amazing young woman who is diligent and kind of strong and she does some really cool things in the Word. And I have my little friends with me today. Um, they're not camels, but we can pretend that they are. And I'm going to sing a song for you to the tune of Three Blind Mice. And hopefully you like it. I don't want to ruin the whole story. There are some really cool things about this story. So just a little bit. We're going to sing Rivka at the Well. Here we go. Rivka at the Well. Rivka at the Well. See her come, see her come. She pulled up the water for Abraham's servant and all his camels as well. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life as Rivka at the well? As Rivka at the well. So from our song, you know that today's story is going to involve Rivka, a young lady, at the well, and her getting water for Abraham's servant and all of his camels. That seems like a lot of work. I can't wait for you to hear about all of that. And so later today, or maybe after sunset, it might be fun for you to act this out. You can get your own little camel friends around and perhaps get some buckets and a broom and pretend that you're getting water for all those camels, just like Rivka did. So let's sing the song one more time. Rivka at the well, Rivka at the well. See her come, see her come. She pulled up the water for Abraham's servant and all his camels as well. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life as Rivka at the well, as Rivka at the well? Well, I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath and that you love learning about Rivka. Bye. <laughs> Bereshit 24 And Abraham was old, advanced in years, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in every way. And Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh, so that I may you swear by Yahweh, the Elohim of the heavens and the Elohim of the earth, that you do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, and among whom I dwell. But go to my land and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son Yisak. Then the servant said to him, what if the woman refuses to follow me to this land? Do I then take your son back to the land from whence you came? And Abraham said unto him, Beware lest you take my son back there. Yahweh, Elohim of the heavens, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my relatives, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your seed I give this land. He sent his messenger before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman refuses to follow you, then you shall be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. Then the servant put his hand into the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter. And the servant took ten of his master's camels and left, for all of his master's good gifts were in his hand. And he arose and went to the city of Aram Naharim, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a fountain of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, Yahweh, Elohim of my master Abraham, please cause her to meet before me this day and show loving commitment to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here by a fountain of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your jar to let me drink. And she says, drink and let me water your camels also. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac, and let me know by this that you have shown loving commitment to my master. And it came to be before he had ended speaking that see Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out and held her jar. And it came to be before he had ended speaking that see Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, 
Abraham's mother came out with her jar on her shoulder, and the young woman was very good looking, a maiden no man having no her. And she went down to the fountain, filled her jar, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my master. And she hurried and let her jar down to give to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, Let me draw waters for your camels also until they have finished drinking. And she hurried and emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the fountain to draw water and drew for all his camels. And watching her, the man remained silent in order to know whether Yahweh had prospered his way or not. And it came to be, when the camels had finished drinking, that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two braces for her wrist weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Please inform me. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? And she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahor. And she said to him, We have both straw and fodder enough and room to spend the night. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped Yahweh. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh, Elohim of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his loving commitment and his truth toward my master. As for me, being on the way, Yahweh led me to the house of my master's brothers. Then the young woman ran and informed those of her mother's house these matters. And Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran out to the man to the fountain. And it came to be when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah, saying, Thus the man spoke to me. And he went to the man and saw him standing by the camels of the fountain. And he said, Come in, O blessed of Yahweh. Why do you stand outside? I myself have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came into the house while he unloaded the camels and provided straw and fodder for the camels and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him and set food before him to eat. But he said, Let me not eat until I have spoken my word. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And Yahweh has blessed my master exceedingly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds, and silver and gold, and male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given to him all that he has. And my master made me swear, saying, Do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But go to my father's house and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, What if the woman does not follow me? But he said to me, Yahweh, before whom I walk, sends his messenger with you, and shall prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son, from my relatives, and from my father's house. Then, when you go to my relatives, you are to be released from this oath. And if they do not give her to you, then you are released from my own. And this day he came to the fountain and said, Yahweh, Elohim of my master Abraham, please, if you are prospering the way in which I am going, see, I am standing by the fountain of water, and when the young woman comes out to draw water, and I say to her, Please, give me a little water from your jar to drink. And she says to me, Drink, and let me draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom Yahweh has appointed for my master's son. And I had not yet ended speaking in my heart, then see, Rebekah was coming out with her jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the fountain and drew water, and I said to her, Please let me drink, and she hurried and let her jar down from her shoulder and said, Drink, and let me water your camels also. So I drank, and she watered the camels also, and I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She, and she said, The daughter of Bethuel and Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrists, and I bowed my head and worshipped Yahweh and blessed Yahweh, Elohim of my master Abraham, who had led me in the true way to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. And now, if you are going to show loving commitment and truth to my master, let me know, and if not, let me know that so that I may turn to the right or to the left. And Laban answered, Bethuel too and said, The matter comes from Yahweh. We are not able to speak to you, either evil or good. See, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be your master's son's wife, as Yahweh has spoken. And it came to be when Abraham's servant heard their words that he bowed himself toward the earth before Yahweh. And the servant brought out ornaments of silver and ornaments of gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. And he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they arose in the morning, he said, Let me go to my master. But her brother and mother said, Let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least ten, then you go. 
And he said to them, Do not delay me, since Yahweh has prospered my way. Let me go, so that I may return to my master. And they said, Let us call the young woman and ask her. So they called Rebekah and said to her, Are you going with this man? And she said, I shall go. So they let Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Let our sister become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and let your seed possess the gates of those who hate them. And Rebekah and her young woman arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. And Yisak came from the way of Be'er Lahal Roy, for he dwelt in the south. And Yisak went out to meditate in the fields in the evening. And he lifted his eyes and looked, and saw the camels coming. And Rebekah lifted her eyes, and when she saw Yisak, she dismounted from her camel. And she said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the fields to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. So she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Yisak of all the matters he had done. And Yisak brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. And she took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Thus, Yisak was comforted after his mother's death. Hello, everyone. This is Miss Saraya. And Miss Aaliyah here today to teach this week's nature lesson. So today on Trained Up and Torah, we've been talking about Abraham wanting a wife for Isaac. So he has his servant go and find a wife for him in the land of Abraham's relatives. Can any of you remember how many camels the servant took with him? That's right, ten. Good job. What did Rebecca do when the servant asked her to give him some water? That's right, she was kind and generous and watered his camels for him. Camels can drink as much as 30 gallons of water at once. So those camels may have drank 300 gallons of water. Boy, was Rebecca being sweet. A thirsty camel can drink 30 gallons of water in 13 minutes. Have you ever heard that camels' humps store water? Well, that's actually not true. Camels' humps actually store fat, which is turned into food or water when needed. It can store up to 80 pounds of fat. When the camel's body uses up the fat, the hump can deflate and becomes flabby. Their humps also help them to keep cool during the day in the hot desert and warm at night when it gets very cold. Most of the camel's fat is in the hump, which it uses for insulation, so the rest of the body isn't as insulated and therefore it doesn't get as hot during the day. The heat collected in the hump during the day warms the rest of the camel's body at night. Camels are very social and in the wild travel in herds with about 30 others. There are more than 14 million camels in the world. Most of them live in Asia, the Middle East, and Australia. Arabian camels have one hump, while Asian camels have two. Camels will not hurt their mouths when they eat thorny or pokey things that might hurt the mouths of other animals. Speaking of camels eating, did you know that the largest meal in the world includes a roasted camel? It is stuffed with two sheep, and the sheep are stuffed with 20 chickens, and the chickens are stuffed with fish. It is used as a special dish at weddings and special parties in places like Saudi Arabia. Are camels scripturally clean? Hmm, let's see. They chew the cut and they don't have a split hook. Instead, they have paws with toenails. Do you think they're clean? Correct, they're not. Camels are one of the beasts of the field. And of the beasts of the field, we are only allowed to eat them if they chew the cut and have a split hook. So let's make sure we're not eating camels. If we want to go for something extremely fancy like that, we can dine on giraffe. Most mammals, including humans, can be dehydrated if they lose 15% of their water. But camels can lose 25% before becoming dehydrated, which means they can go a lot longer without water. Ever heard of camel spitting? Well, camels don't just spit for fun. They also spit when they feel threatened. They use it as a defense mechanism. So unless you have the desire to get spit on by a camel, I would suggest you be nice to them. The word camel is an Arabic word, which literally means beautiful. Camels are fast. They can run up to 40 miles an hour, but they are not very smooth. They move both their legs on the same side of their body at once. Giraffes do this too, and can cause the riders to become seasick. A camel's pregnancy can last between 12 and 14 months, depending on the season and how easily they can get food. Camels are able to close their nostrils to keep out sand. They also have two sets of eyelids. One shorter, which is closest to the eye, and one longer. Aren't camels amazing? Who do you think made them so awesome? That's right, Yahweh. 
Now before we end this week's nature lesson, can you tell me one thing that you learned about camels today? Great job! Well that's all for today! Hope you have a blessed week! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! Ariel, what'd you find? <laughs> you found what? A camel! What? That it's is so a, cool! It's a really nice camel! It's not How good. many humps does it have? It has one! One hump! Did y'all see those teeth? Yes! Uh, wait, no, he has Be two careful, humps! Be careful, Seth! He has two humps! No, that one's just got one! Do they spit? There are two species of camels in the world, the one hump camel that we see here from Asia and the two hump camel from Africa. And people have been using them for years for transportation. What do you think it'd be like to ride a camel? Seth and Ariel got the opportunity to. Check it out. The saddle on a camel is way different than a horse. Man, Seth and Ariel said that the camel was soft, but he smelled kind of funny. <laughs> what do you think Elazar thought about having to ride one for so long? Aren't those camels really cool? Could you imagine riding one? I mean, you can see it happening right here, but could you imagine riding one for a long time? Yeah, me either. So I did some research on it and I was looking up how far it would be to be where uh, Isaac and Abraham were over in Hebron, all the way over to where their family lived, which was in Nahor. And long story short, a camel goes about 20 miles a day. That's, that's what it'll do in about a day's time whenever it's just walking. It would take nearly a month, a month straight of riding a camel to get from one place to the other. <laughs> Does that sound like fun? No, it doesn't. All right, so let's get into our next segment and I'll see you here in just a few minutes. Shalom Chavarim, it was so nice to see you again. So this week we're talking about Rachel being chosen as the wife for Isaac. Isn't that awesome? So I thought this would be a good time to review our wedding words and add a few. Let's go. Our first review word is Kala. Kala, that is bride. Let's go to the next one. Our next review word is Chatan. Chatan. Our last review word for now is wedding cake, which would be Ugat Haktuna. Ugat Haktuna. Okay, now let's go learn a couple new ones. One of our new words is Yom Ha Hatuna. Yom Ha Hatuna. Yom Ha Hatuna. That is wedding day. You did great. Our next word is wedding contract. Is Jose Ha Hatuna. Jose Ha Hatuna. Awesome. Thank you for spending some time with me today reviewing our Hebrew from before and adding a couple words to it. I love you guys and I pray you have a blessed time with your family today. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. It's Miss Jessica here with our history lesson. I hope you're having a wonderful Shabbat so far. Today we've been learning how Rebecca became Isaac's wife. One thing that stuck out as really strange to me was what Abraham's servant did when he made him promise, or make an oath, to not find a wife for Isaac from among the Canaanites, but to go to his homeland in search of a wife for his son. Have you ever heard someone making a promise and doing that? Putting their hand under their thigh? 
Me neither. We used to think of people shaking hands with a promise or giving pinky promises to our friends. If you remember, Yah even gave us a rainbow as a sign of his promise. Well, there was a reason that Abraham had his servant put his hand under his thigh when he gave this oath. Back then, it was the custom for a servant to take an oath this way. By putting their hand under their master's thigh and their master sitting down on their thigh on the servant's hand, this was a symbol that the servant was under his master's authority. I thought that was a really neat bit of information. Now something else that caught my attention was that Abraham's servant gave Rebecca a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrist weighing ten shekels of gold. To help that make a little bit more sense, I looked up what that meant. One shekel is equal to about 0.4 ounces. So that means that he gave Rebecca two bracelets that weighed about a fourth of a pound. Why do you think he gave her jewelry? Those are some pretty good ideas you got there. These gifts of jewelry were a sign of his master's wealth. When Rebecca's brother Laban rushed out to meet the servant at the spring and he had just seen what had been given to Rebecca and heard what was spoken to her, Laban said, Come in, O blessed of Yahweh. He had noticed that Abraham and his servant were indeed blessed by Yah. In giving these gifts, the servant was showing his intentions in claiming Rebekah as Isaac's wife. When she accepted them and allowed the servant to put the nose ring in her nose and bracelets on her wrist, it was showing that she was agreeing to proceed with the possible engagement by allowing the servant to speak to her family about the marriage. When it was agreed by her family and by Rebecca that she would become Isaac's wife, the servant bowed himself towards the earth before Yahweh, then brought out ornaments of silver, ornaments of gold and garments and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave costly gifts to her brother, Laban and to her mother. We don't know exactly what all these gifts were that he gave or what he gave to Rebecca, but I'm sure they were pretty extravagant. These gifts help to show a personal interest in the bride by the groom or the groom's family. Abraham and his servant trusted in Yah to provide a wife for his son, Isaac, and Yah did provide. Isaac loved Rebecca, and she was a comfort to him after his mother's death. From Genesis 24, verse 67. Well, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Shabbat and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.
rain and, and oozing out of every nook and cranny. And I'm just bewildered, I'm bewildered, I'm bewildered. The needs of every man and woman and child are being met by thousands of, of my loving neighbors. What could possibly be causing all these of them? I, I, I know, I know, I know. I, I need to talk to my good, my good friend, Hal. He, he will tell me what's going on. Hal, 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 hi, hi, Hal. Hi, hi Jane. Yeah, how are you? You know what? It's the strangest, the strangest, most bewildering thing happening in Okie Bokieville today. Tell me, Hal, do you have some insight into what's going on today in our little town? Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just a few minutes ago, I saw a lonely elderly man walking by uh -huh. using a cane. I could tell by his face that he felt hopeless mm -hmm. and alone, mm -hmm. like perhaps he didn't have a family to love him. And at that moment, I saw a younger man walk over and start talking to him. He placed his hand on the man's shoulder and showed such love. Oh! He shared the love of Yeshua with him and invited him over for dinner. Away they walked together. Oh! The elderly man looked like a changed man. Oh, hell, that's just, that's just amazing. That's just amazing, I'll tell you, amazing. I, I also ran into a boy earlier who was so excited that he had made $60 oh. mowing lawns around his neighborhood. That's very responsible of him, you know. Mm -hmm. When I asked him what he was planning to do with the money, he told me that he has a friend who is going on a missionary trip to Romania. He said that the Romanians are very poor and that the money would help them buy food and clothes. This boy couldn't have been more than 10 years old but I was amazed by his understanding. He told me that Yahweh helps him to feel compassion for those in need and that Yeshua will always show him a way to help others. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very, you know, you know, I'm going to interrupt you because I, I need to go talk to my, to my friends. I need to call them and, and tell them and, 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 and see what else is going on in the town of Okie Dokieville. So, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Right, Jane. Goodbye. 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 I need to find my friend. Warren. Warren has had a very hard year. His wife passed away last year, and now he is working two jobs just to support his kids. Even though it has been very difficult for him, Warren is known in around this neighborhood for the joy in his heart and the smile on his face. What a terrific person. Oh, look. Here he comes now. Hey, dude. What's up? The sky. That never gets old. <laughs> hey, pretty amazing uh, day in the town of Okie Dokieville today. It most certainly is. <laughs> hey, or mm -hmm. do you think you can uh, explain the things that have been happening to you? Oh, dude. It was amazing. I don't even know where to start. You know, well, I'll start at the beginning. That's a good place, to, a very good place, a very good place to start. <laughs> but anyways, I got up at 4.30 in the morning. You see, I have to start the day, well, you know, uh, pretty early because I have to get a meal on the table for the kids before I run off to work. Well. I opened the front door to get a newspaper, only to discover a basket on the ground right outside. And there was something in the basket. I picked it up and I brought it and put it on the kitchen table and I pulled it back and I tell you, I couldn't believe my eyes. What was it? What was it? Well, staring at me, man, I tell you, dude, there staring at me was money money and lots of it why there must have been thousands of dollars in there dude mm -hmm. it was amazing pretty amazing that is amazing mm -hmm. warren you want an idea who left the basket was there a note well i just stood there and, and <clears throat> i hate to say it but the tears welled up in my eyes happens it's, to the best of us well yeah 
him. <clears throat> I was going to say allergies, but you know, who am I trying to kid? It's been hard since my wife died. And man, I have to watch every penny, but Yahweh, he's been merciful to me and he truly is the joy of my heart. I looked at that basket and I was just overcome with Yah's love. Tears flowed and I fell to my knees. It was then that I saw the note. And the only thing written inside was Yahweh loves you. And so do we. Oh. <clears throat> Allergies. <laughs> uh, thank you for sharing your amazing gift with me, Warren. <clears throat> that, that's just the most incredible story of, of love <clears throat> that I have ever heard. Ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, listen, I gotta go pick up the kiddos from school, so I'll talk to you later. Good seeing you, Hal. You too, Warren. All right. Just the luck, dude. Bye. Wow. I have just witnessed a great example of Yahweh's love. It is so important to show love to one another and help each other when we need help. That's what life and Yahweh is all about. to Warren. Yeah? He's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah, sure is. He works like two jobs and takes care of his kids and he shows kindness to everyone around him. Well, I tell you, that's what it's all about. Loving Yahweh and, and showing his love through our lives. You know, in Romans 12, verse it says if your gift is to encourage, do it. And and if you have money, share it. If Yahweh has given you leadership, well then take responsibility. And if you if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, well, you're supposed to do that gladly too. Man, oh man, I'm glad that we can can meet the needs of others around us and then we can act on it when when Yahweh tells us to. Seize the moment, that's what I always say, seize it. Grab the bull by the horns and, well, anyways, serving others, especially our brothers and sisters in Yahweh, begins with seeing the need and, and feeling their pain and, and taking action. Action! I love action! Action! Uh -huh. Even when it costs us our time, our energy, and our money. The community of Okie Dokieville will forever be changed as far as I'm concerned and, and forever blessed with Yahweh's love. Wouldn't it be great if this happened in every town? In, yeah. And in every country? It sure would. It can happen. And it can happen in Yahweh's name. So, what, what are we going to do, Hal? Seize the bull by his horns. Take action! Action! I love it. You know, I'm going to start right now by making cookies. I love cookies. Mm, okay, going to make cookies. Going to make cookies. Bye! Bye. And I'm gonna go fight some fires! Alright kiddos, it's time for the Sabbath day stretch. So what I'm gonna need for you to do is I'm gonna need you to get up, because we're gonna move around with each other, and I need you to move stuff out in your living room like I've done, or if you're in your bedroom, but you need to make sure that you got plenty of space to be able to move around. So go ahead and hit pause, get that stuff moved out of the way, and then come back and hit play, and I'll be sitting here waiting for you. All right, you ready? So, we went to the zoo, and we saw all kinds of animals today. 
and I thought that we would do stretches that had something to do with the animals we saw. Well, I say that. There's one animal that we didn't see that I really wanted to stretch like. That was the elephant. We didn't see an elephant at the zoo. But normally you do. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take, and we're gonna put our arms up, and then we're gonna stretch down. And I want you to touch your toes. All right, this doesn't make you think elephant. Matter of fact, when you think toes, you start thinking about camels, which we saw. But what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take our arms and pretend like they're trunks. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and widen our legs just a little bit. Just a little bit, all right? And we're gonna take our trunks and we're gonna sit there and we're gonna go whoosh, 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 whoosh. Now, I want you to make sure of something. Your brother and your sisters can't be right there because if you do, you'll go whoosh, smack. And that wouldn't be any fun, would it? So, do like this. Oh, and stretch your head up. And it feels good. Matter of fact, it feels so good that you can even go, Damn. No. All right, so next stretch we're gonna do, it's gonna make us think about a camel. So I want you to get all the way down like this. And if you ever notice, a camel's gotta get up on its fours. And we're gonna do a stretch that makes us have a hump. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our necks, put it up like this, and then we're gonna go and make a big hump in our back. And think camel. All right, breathe out. Breathe in and come up with your head. Let your breath out. Breathe in again and make a big hump like a camel. Oh, and let it out. You should feel that all over the place. All right, do it one more time. Oh, that feels good. Now we're gonna do another one. It's gonna stretch the back sides of our legs. So keep your hands right here. Take and put your legs up and just lean back. And you see a lot of animals do this. And if you watch your dog, when he gets up in the morning, he does this, but every animal that I see that's got four legs does the same thing. So we saw the giraffes do this, as a matter of fact. So think about a giraffe as you're doing this. But you should feel the stretch on the back side of your legs. All right, let's hold it for one more breath. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. All right, next one we're gonna do is, I want you to come like you're gonna do a push-up and just go down to the ground. Now, we saw some snakes, didn't we? <laughs> I don't like snakes, just so you know. All right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your hands right by your shoulders and you're just gonna lift your body up. You're gonna keep your pelvis on the ground and you're gonna wiggle just a little bit. I want you to think about a cobra. You know, cobras sit up like this. They got that, you know, I don't know what it's called. What's it called when you're, when they have that flap of skin come up around their head that looks like a collar? I have to look that up, I don't know. Anyway, it should stretch your lower back really good. Oh, I like that stretch. All right, the last stretch is going to be another one that a camel has to do. So a camel has to get down in a low position in order for you to get onto it. So they get down real low, but then they go and they have to stretch their legs out like this to be able to stand up. So what I want you to do is, I want you to sit down on your bossy, put your feet up, put your bossy all the way on the ground, and I want you to put your legs out like, or your arms out like this, and just stretch. And you should feel this in your shoulders, and it should feel great. All right, let's go over to the left side, put your left hand out, your right hand on top of it. Don't forget to breathe. All right, let's go to the right hand side. Put your left hand on top of your right hand. All right, come back to the middle. Oh, and there you go. That's the Sabbath day stretch right there. So let's finish up our Sabbath school. We're gonna have a craft, we're gonna have a song, and then we're getting prayed out. We'll see ya. Shalom. Did you know that you can ask for Yahweh's help? In our lesson today, Abraham's servant called on the name of Yahweh and asked him for favor to help him find this chosen wife that he had for Isaac. The Bible says that Yahweh is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Let's pray and learn a new song today. Heavenly Father, I thank you 
that we can come boldly into your throne room because of what Yeshua has done for us. I pray that you would teach us and help us to love you with all of our hearts. Shabbat Shalom, everybody! This week our memory verse is John, or Yohanan, to use a more Hebrew version, 414. Let's go ahead and read it real quick. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. John, or Yohanan, 414. Now, before we get into memorization, let me take a minute and talk about why I picked this verse. These are the words of Yeshua as he's speaking to a Samaritan woman that he finds by a well. He, like Rivka in the story today, is offering to give this woman water. But not just any water, special water that will make her never thirst again. Can you imagine literally drinking that kind of water? Well, Yeshua wasn't talking about literal water. Still, it's a very real water that springs up into everlasting life, like the verse said. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So now it's time to memorize our verse. I'm going to take out a few words again, and you're going to fill in the blanks after you pause the video, okay? Here we go. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. John, or Yohanan, 4.14 Great, now here's another one. Pause the video. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. 
But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. John or Yohanan 4.14 Great! Now pause the video and try reciting your memory verse. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. John or Yohanan 4.14 Well done, guys! Now here's your memory verse again. Remember to keep practicing it throughout the week. Well, that's all for now. See you next time. Shabbat Shalom. Hey guys, it's Miss Ashley back with you here today on Sabbath. And I noticed that today we've learned a whole lot about camels. I know Mr. Joey was talking about it a lot to you. And we got to go to the zoo and see the cool camels. Um, and we even got to see some of us touching one and petting one and that was like super fun. And I hope we get to do that again. So today in our craft, I thought we'd make a camel. And I couldn't figure out which camel craft to do, and I finally decided on a mask. Camel mask. Check me out. Do I look like a camel? <laughs> well, I had a whole lot of fun making this craft. But I'd like to tell you a couple things before we get started with the craft. So, you're going to have to use a lot of markers. Um, not a lot of markers. You don't even have to use markers. You could use crayons. But if you decided on a marker, make sure you cover your workspace because we don't want markers getting on uh, your parents' table or anything else that you're coloring on. Second thing is, <clears throat> look how I cut out the eyes. Okay, I got to use my scissors for that. And it's really hard to like dig the scissor down in there. So please ask a parent or an older sibling to help you with that so that you don't get poked or cut because that wouldn't be fun. Um, before we get off here, I wanted to tell you a fun fact about camels. Did you know that camels can drink 30 to 50 gallons of water in 10 minutes? That is crazy. Can you imagine that many gallons of water? So that was fun. Now go get your materials and let's get started on our camel mask.
For this week's snack idea, let's make a camel. Now camels are unclean, so we're not gonna eat a camel, but we can make a camel out of clean ingredients. So I provided some pictures of some made out of fruit. You can get creative. You can make it out of fruit, vegetables, candy. There's one that I saw that was super cute. It's a cupcake. And they make a little picture of a camel's head and attach that to the cupcake. And they use pretzels for the legs. So get creative and share pictures of your creations. We'd love to see them. Now, it might be helpful if you use some toothpicks to help hold your creations together. Shabbat Shalom. Hey there, I'm so glad you got to spend your Shabbat with us today, and I hope you learned something new as well. Today we've learned all about how Rebecca became Isaac's wife. If Abraham hadn't trusted in Yah to provide a wife for his son, and his servant hadn't trusted in Yah when he went in search of a bride, Isaac may never have married Rebecca. It took more than one person trusting in Yah for this beautiful marriage to happen. Many times in life we have no idea what we're doing, and we have to rely on Yah to guide us. In fact, that's what we should do in every situation, rely on him to lead us. Like how Abraham's servant asked Yah to show him who he had chosen for Isaac by having her water the camels too. Have you ever been in a situation where you had no idea what you were going to do or say? I know I have. I like to ask Yah to help me in these situations to say and do what he would have me do and to show me things when I cannot see them. Now let's have our closing prayer. Abba, Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these wonderful people who have chosen to spend their Shabbat here with us and learn and grow in your word today. Father, please bless everyone watching and all those that work hard every week in creating our Shabbat school. We ask that you would please guide us as we go throughout each day to trust in you, to trust in your plans that you've made for us, to ask for guidance when we are unsure of what to do or say. Help us to grow our faith and to follow your ways. In Yeshua's name we ask these things. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you all have a blessed week. We hope you'll join us again next week. Shalom.